Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. Today, we're revisiting Sixth Wave Innovations, Inc. And I'm looking because sometimes I call it Sixth Waves, and it's singular. Right, Dr. Jonathan Gluckman? It is the sixth wave of technology, nanotech. Trades as the symbol SIXW on the CSE. Some pretty exciting things have happened scientifically in the past couple of weeks. So today we're ignoring corporate. Let's talk operations. You had a press release on the 2nd and a press release on the 9th. Tell us about that. Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, as many of you may know, if you're following us, we've been working to develop a rapid test for uh, viruses, in particular with the COVID-19. And uh, so we got lucky. We finally got to work on the, the chemistry and everything and uh, working in collaboration with some folks at the University of Alberta, along with our, uh, our senior scientist, Dr. Garrett Kraft there. And uh, we've had some good breakthroughs in terms of producing that. We have now fully produced uh, the first imprinted polymers with the actual COVID-19 virus. What's an imprinted polymer? <laughs> great, uh, great question. So uh, the science that this company is really circled around is molecularly printed polymers. The easiest way that I've found to describe this is take a piece of clay, soft clay, push your thumb into it, pull your thumb out, and what you've created now is an imprint of your thumb, and it has the size and the shape of your thumb and your fingerprint in that imprint. Well, what we do is we build polymers around molecules so that when we pull the molecule out, we've left the same kind of imprint, and we build then with the polymer either ways of detecting it or okay. more specifically methods to attract those those molecules back into the polymer and capture them, whether we're doing that for purification or we're doing it for detection. Okay. So we've done that now for viruses. All viruses or one in particular? Well, right now we've just targeted the, uh, the COVID-19 virus, but what we've developed now is a methodology for being able to do this so that we, at the very beginning of the process, need access to virus. We then create a stamp of the virus and we can use that indefinitely to produce or almost indefinitely to produce multiple tests with it. That way uh, we have a production method that doesn't require access to viruses anymore. Um, humans only? No, uh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, we can collect viruses from a number of different places. We could look at it in the blood. We can look at it in breath. Uh, in fact, we're working on a project with, um, uh, with uh, CTRI and York University to develop this for airborne detection of, uh, of viruses. We had an outbreak of mad cow disease roughly 15 years ago, which terrified the country. Um, would it work for that? Yeah, we can, we can basically, once done, uh, we can basically imprint for any of the, po uh, any of the viruses that are out there and, and we would do such. Was that opportunity, Colin? Good, it happens to all of us. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, um, you know, one of the things that uh, in dealing with the uh, with the Canadian health authorities is they were particularly interested in how this could be extended for remote uh, remote monitoring, remote sensing, and especially with things like venereal diseases. Because, you know, since we have such a remote population that doesn't have access all the time to, uh, to health care, collecting samples and being able to send them back to be analyzed is very difficult. So having something like this rapid test that's, that's uh, highly reliable and, you know, just does simple color metrics, for example, for detection is a significant boon, even for some of the smaller things. And of course, we all know that now we're dealing with, with all these different mutations of the coronavirus and how do we tell coronavirus from influenza? We have the ability to directly address that. In fact, uh, using the molecular imprinted uh, method, we should be relatively agnostic to these new variants coming out. We don't have to worry about whether, you know, the immune system can't see them anymore because we're not using detection based on that antibody antigen linkage. So Dr. Gluckman, how do you commercialize this? Oh, great. You know, once we've proven this out and we've, we've uh, uh, optimized the sensor, the polymer, 
then we'll get into production with, uh, with existing polymer manufacturing companies like we do for our other products. They'll be able to do that. Then we've linked up with a company here in Nova Scotia to help us actually produce some products, including maybe lateral flow tests, but also a smart mask where we'll implement the uh, polymer into a mask. So every time you breathe into the mask, it has an opportunity to collect viruses. And then we'll be able to either affect a color change inside the mask. So you take oh, it off and that, look at it. Cool. Or we can even do things like uh, link it with an RFID chip or with a QCR code so that you can read it with a cell phone or anywhere else. So is your customer companies, government or retail individuals? Actually, our target is all of those. You know, the you know one of the barriers to entrance rapid tests for the consumer has been a, um, a a reluctance for the government to approve these tests because of reliability and the need to control how samples are collected. Uh, when you're just picking it off the breath, um, we don't have to worry about that as a user error that might. Uh, lead to wrong results. So we, we really view this as a way of people being able to, you know, buy a mask, give it to your kid, they get to wear it for a week, of course, it gets, you know, you know, uh, uh, infected. But you know, it could be tested before they come into school every day and look, you know, somebody just looks at the mask. Yep, it's all good. Kid goes into school, comes home. This would be something that could sell for a few dollars, so it doesn't put people out of, you know, on the on the streets by having to be, uh, you know, having a test that they can use every day for themselves and their children. The same as with uh, sporting events and travel. Uh, you know, if we can get it into that kind of simple format and at the right right price point, then, you know, doing widespread testing and connecting that directly with contact tracing is going to be relatively simple. So what's next? You've had two very interesting press releases. What's yep. next? Yeah, well, the diagnostic work is starting now to uh, look at the sensitivity and selectivity uh, elements of the polymer that we've made. Uh, we'll have more data on that in the upcoming weeks. And uh, hopefully we'll be uh, starting to approach and achieve the same kinds of sensitivity as uh, the PCR tests uh, or even better. And then as we do that, we'll be starting to engage with the manufacturing partners that we want to, to work to commercialize that. With a, with a little bit of luck and the right funding, uh, you know, we should be able to uh, be launching some products late third quarter, early fourth quarter. Fantastic. So we'll be talking late third quarter, early fourth quarter. Uh, or if we do breakthroughs before then, I hope before then. Thank you for the education, sir. Sure. My pleasure. Dr. Gluckman from Sixth Wave SIXW on the CSE. I'm Peter Clausey saying goodbye from Investor Intel.